All right, Abby, I do have it streaming live to YouTube and I have us doing a recording to the cloud just as a backup in case, but it does look like it's working. Okay. Am I a presenter? Yeah. Okay. And I can share the PowerPoint. Is anybody coming? Oh, there's, there's Wayne. Wayne. Good evening, Wayne. Good evening. Are you in charge tonight? Uh, I'm running the PowerPoint. Well, good. All right. <laughs> Mel won't be here. Um, she's on vacation, but Jacob will be here. Okay. So, uh, in terms of the technical aspects, me and Gretchen are running the show, but we're Gretchen? not. Yeah, Gretchen's running the the live stream. This seems she's paying attention. <laughs> yep, of course. Am I the first on? Yep. And then just to let you know too, Wayne, we do have the stream started just because I wasn't sure how difficult that was going to be. So just okay. so you're aware, we are recording, but all right. <laughs> we're all good. I just wanted to let you be known of that. Okay, Todd's on. Yep. Okay. How's everybody doing tonight? Good, how are you, Todd? Good, thank you. And just to let you know, Todd, we are recording just because we don't have Mel here, who's usually the one doing the live stream for us. So I started it a little early just in case there were complications. Thankfully, there's not, but I'm not wanting to stop it and then redo it. Okay, no problem. Well, you're confident. Hey, yeah, right. pretty much how it is today. I don't do this when we're down in chambers usually. Usually I'm already over in the bullpen already. So Mel's usually the one who does that for us. So. Looks like we have Keith. How we doing? Good, how are you, Keith? Good, doing real good. Where are you, Keith? I'm somewhere south. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, 
What's going? It's it's hot here. Is it hot up there? I hadn't been out since this morning. It's like a little bit hot, but it's not terrible. It's like actually, you no, know, I think it is hitting ninety right now. And it's pretty humid, but it's not awful. It's St. Louis weather. It, that's it. Well, this is supposed to be the rainy season down here in Florida. And it hasn't rained in two weeks. So, oh, oh, there you go. You progressing down there? No, I, yeah, I am. But, but uh, things were supposed to happen. It's supposed to have a roof completed uh, a Saturday and a clay towel roof. And I had to get up on a ladder myself, cut cut some flashing for these people that do it every day. They're the experts. <laughs> and, and then they went, oh, 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 yeah, we see, see, see. And I'm like, okay, damn it. <laughs> and that's, you know, it's, it's a licensed, legitimate, sure. big dollar contractor, and it's unbelievable. It's called subcontractor under a subcontractor under a subcontractor. You don't know who you're getting to work on your hands. Not good. Is the company local? They are. They are. Okay. And they were recommended by a roofing contractor from St. Louis who has a place in Naples. But, you know, and then they pull up in the, uh, the company truck with the company trailer. But, you know, when... And when I talk to these guys, I know darn well they understand me, and then they dummy up that they can't speak no, no lingo. <laughs> Amazing how that works. Well, you know what? Then when you tell them that you've been doing this for fifty years, they they their eyes bug out and they go, "Oh, okay, you're not the normal schmuck there that we can pull this over." Yeah. Until the next time they come and you got to re-educate them again. Hey, Wayne, it's Sandy. Yes, Sandy. Hi, quick question for you. Yeah. Um, on the executive meetings, these are recorded and available to the public, right? Yes, they are. Okay, just wanted to... Do... recording now. Yeah, just to let everybody know. Sorry, folks. Um, yeah, we do stream this live to YouTube um, so okay. people can watch it live okay it's 57 it shouldn't have been started yet i know we didn't have mel here so i didn't know how this was gonna go over so okay i will i will watch what i say then <laughs> sandy we've always done these in the past in chambers but uh we're trying to see if it's more advantageous to just do a Zoom, because normally these last about 30 minutes. I think it worked fine for me last time. Okay, good. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. And then next week for the public meeting, I'll be out of town, so I'll attend by Zoom. <clears throat> that would have been your first public meeting. No, last month. Oh, you did? Okay, you were there, okay. Is is Mel out of town? Yes. Good for her. We're shy. I hope she went somewhere to have some fun. Uh, I think she's on a beach somewhere, so I think there she's going to be happy. Hopefully it's not up in New York. No, I don't think so. I don't think she went that far. <laughs> Let's see. I think it's in Naples. Naples. That's a good place. There you go. <laughs>
Okay, we've got six. Uh, anybody not getting on tonight? Oh, Gary's here. I have seven, yeah. I don't see Mr. Cunningham. Um, who else are we missing? I don't see Mr. Bedell. So I think that would be the nine, correct? Right. Yeah, those are the two we're missing then. I'm not sure personally if either one of them is able to attend tonight. I don't know if anybody else, if Abby or Jacob knows by chance on that. No, Abby, did Evelyn let us know? She did not let me know. Okay, and I see Mr. Fagan, who I think must have uh, must be able to attend. Um, but I have 601. Do we? I you've got. I you'll have a quorum. So do we want to go ahead and get started and take roll? Yeah, let's go ahead and start then. Abby, do you have the list in front of you? Can you take roll? Or would you like me to do so? If you could do it, please. I'm sharing the PowerPoint. Yeah, no, understood. Absolutely, Mr. Sneed. Here. Mr. Hilsinger. Here. Mr. Fagan. Here. Miss Hart. Here. Miss Hancock. Here. Mr. Taylor. Here. Mr. Elliot. Here. Mr. Bedell, and Mr. Cunningham. So with that, uh, Mr. Hilsinger, you have seven, you have a quorum. Seven. Okay. Uh, next, we got meeting summaries. We need a motion to accept the minutes from the executive meeting of June 5, 2023. So moved. We have a second. Was that you, Lou's on? I guess it's on, yes, for Sorry. the record. Sorry. Okay, we have a motion to accept. Uh, any comments, questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 8 0. Uh, we do not have a planning status sheet, no committee reports. So we'll go to the first new business item, which is PC. 17-23 Banny Properties LLC. Good evening, PC 17-23 Banny Properties LLC was a request for a change in zoning from the C2 shopping district to the R6 residence district for 0.11 acres located on the northwest corner of Gravoy Road and Philo Avenue. This is coming before the commission this evening as a letter of recommendation. As the commission may recall from the last public hearing, this site is located in South County and the site is on the right is outlined in red. Here's a larger aerial with that site outlined in red along Gravoy Road. Staff is recommending approval of the change in zoning as Gravoy Road is characterized with a mixture of residential and commercial uses. The range of uses permitted in the R6 residence district zoning are reasonable and compatible with the surrounding area. This structure was designed and built for residential use. And due to the small size of the lot, only one single family dwelling unit could be accommodated on the property in the R6. As well, staff would like to note that Informational business signs are not permitted on residential parcels, so planning staff will work with the Department of Transportation and Public Works to ensure that the sign is removed prior to the issuance of occupancy permits. And at this time, I ask for a motion. Okay, we need a motion. Make a motion, Make a motion, motion for here. approval. Do we have a second? I got a motion. Okay, we have a first and second. Any comments, questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it 8 0. And we'll go on to PC 18 23, St. Louis County Planning Commission. Good evening, everyone. PC 18 23, St. Louis County Planning Commission. This is a request for a rezoning from an M3 plant industrial district. Up here. I can't hear. Yeah, can't we hear. can't hear. Is it not working? Shane, is your uh, microphone near your lips? <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, yeah. Okay, is it good now? There we go. That's better. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll just restart. Yeah. 
PC 18-23, St. Louis County Planning Commission. This is a request for a rezoning from a M3 plant industrial district to a R5 residential district. The track size of the petition site is 0.6 acres and the location is on the east side of New Hampshire Avenue, north of Weber Road. And this petition is coming before the commission as a letter of recommendation. As you can see on the left side, the location is in Afton, Missouri in South County. And on the right side, you can see an aerial view, which is um, the subject site is highlighted in red. I mean, you know, light in red, yeah. And this is just an enlarged aerial view. And at this time, the planning department would like to request approval for this zoning petition, citing that a site development plan establishing the uses permitted by the M3 planned industrial district ordinance was never submitted. Um, this is referring back to PC 33-98, which was a petition that proposed the repurposing of the dwelling on the subject site into an office. Continuing along, the Planning Commission can revert zoning when an SDP is not approved within 18 months of ordinance adoption. And lastly, the Planning Department finds that the R5 Residence District is appropriate and is consistent with the zoning of surrounding parcels. Therefore, we would like to request a motion. We need a motion. I'd like to make a motion for approval. Second. Second. Discussion. Seeing no one, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it, 8-0. And next we've got PC 19-23 Hazelwood School District. Good evening, commissioners. This is PC 19-23 Hazelwood School District. It's a request for a conditional use permit in the R4 residence district on a 71.66 acre tract on the southwest side of New Halls Ferry Road, approximately 1,000 feet northwest of Patterson. As you may recall, this site is in North County, and on the right, you can see the site outlined in red in the aerial. Here's a larger aerial of the site, and I've put an icon to indicate where the athletic field is. Uh, as opposed to a pr traditional preliminary site development plan, the petitioner submitted a um, out boundary of the um, school complex. So you can see that. And on the next slide, there's an aerial that um, better indicates the, the scope of the athletic field. The department is uh, recommending approval for granting a conditional use permit to permit a lighted athletic field. Um, the department finds that uh, the request is, is reasonable to permit a lighted athletic field at secondary schools of the appropriate size. Um, and that there are, and the department notes that there are existing examples from peer schools in the region um, with the expectation that light spillage onto abutting parcels is minimized. Um, and thus in the conditions, the department has requested that lighting shall not exceed 0.8 foot candles along any adjoining property line of our resident districts and that lighted activities shall not extend beyond 10 p.m or one hour after activities are completed, whichever is later. And now I'd like to request a motion. Okay, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. We have a second. <laughs> second a motion. Okay, we have a first and second. Um, questions, comments, anyone? Seeing no one, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it 8 0. And we'll go on to old business, ready for action. And the item is PC 03 23, Dormish Sharma. Before we get to that, Mr. Hilsinger, we have one yeah. more, we have one more Hazelwood petition. 20-23. Oh, we didn't do that. Okay. Let's, let's go back then, 20-23. 20, 20 so before you have PC 20-23, Hazelwood School District, 
It's a request for a conditional use permit in the R3 residence district to permit a lighted athletic field. It's on a 75.13 acre tract on the east side of Dunn Road, approximately 400 feet south of Claudine Drive. Uh, as you can see, the site is in North County and in red, you can see the site outlined in red. And once again, I put an icon on this larger aerial to show where the field is um, in the greater facility of the campus. So once again, uh, they submitted a out boundary of the school's complex and then a um, closer aerial to give a better indication of how the athletic field is situated. Uh, much like with PC 19-23, um, the department is recommending approval, um, noting that we find uh, athletic field reasonable in this location as well, um, with the same stipulations that lighting shall not exceed 0.8 foot candles along any adjoining property line of our residence districts, and that lighted activities shall not extend beyond 10 p.m. or one hour after activities are completed, whichever is later. And now I'd like to request a motion. Okay, we need a motion. I'll make the motion. For second first. motion. We have a first and second. <clears throat> Questions or comments? Um, this is Sandy. I do have a question. So yeah. the, the lighted activity shall not extend beyond 10 p.m. or one hour after activities are completed. Seems like that would be whichever is earlier. I think that you're right. Uh, I think that you that you're right, um, Commissioner Hancock, because we don't really want it to extend beyond 10 p.m., uh, which we can make that correction in the into the uh, report. We can actually do it for both of the actions okay. um, prior to sending these off for because that you will see these again at your next meeting in the finalized form. So we can make that correction, um, okay. Peter. I thought I was missing something. <laughs> no, I think you're correct. Okay, I think I'll make a note. Thanks, Commissioner. Thank you, Sandy. Any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it 8 0. Now we'll go on to PC 03 23. PC OC. PC 03-23 Dharma Sharma is a request for a conditional use permit in the C2 shopping district for a 0.41 acre tract on the northeast quadrant of Telegraph Road and West Pottle Avenue. As you'll recall, this site is in South County and there it is outlined in red. Um, just a reminder of the timeline for this petition, public hearing was held on February, 5th, February 13th, 2023 uh, the commission held this request at your March 20th executive meeting, citing concerns about the proposed building location within the front yard setbacks. The petitioner then submitted a revised site development plan and architectural elevations, and the commission held the request again at the June 5th executive meeting with concerns about the architectural elevations. Um, the petitioner submitted revised elevations and and that will be what's uh before you tonight um so here's the second revised site development plan which has not changed since you last saw it and the the landscape plan which has been the same these are the elevations that were presented at the june 5th executive meeting and uh, these are the revised elevations, which show a mix of higher quality materials and a greater degree of fenestration. Um, the department is recommending at least 50% of the facades be clad in stone. Um, so that's stone along the, the bottom right now. We're requesting that or recommending that it be brought up higher um, about to where the red line that I've drawn on the elevations is shown. Um, and of course, we are recommending that all sides be equally treated and the facades be clad in a mix of brick stone and other high quality materials and that all facades have real fenestration. 
the department's recommended revision to the site development plan remain the same, which include landscape islands at the terminus of each parking row, no window signs or temporary parking lot signage permitted, um, and we note that they'll be required to seek a variance to permit the drive aisle within the front yard setback. So the department is continuing to recommend approval of this request. We continue to find the CUP procedure appropriate and the uh, proposed use appropriate at this site. Um, the specific conditions of development we are recommending are that the curb cut on Telegraph Road be limited to write out only, an alternate landscape plan be submitted, architectural review be required, and we note that the variance from the Board of Zoning Adjustment will be required for the drive aisle location. So at this time, I would like to request a motion. Uh, yes, I'd like to, I'd like to make a motion to hold until we can discuss and get a little clarification on a few items ha having read your report. I believe I'll need a second. We have a to second to that. Second to motion. Okay. Yeah. Bill, you want to? Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, in reading a report, uh, the basis for uh, uh, providing a CUP at, uh, on this per, uh, particular uh, site was be is because the existing uh, or the petitioner currently has the CUP in the site that they're at today. Uh, a CUP, if I'm correct, is only good for that petitioner and only at that location. Um, so my question is, uh, I don't remember, but my memory is not as good as most. Um, I don't remember that this ever came to the CUP that's uh, currently uh, uh, on record. I don't I'm think that ever Bill. came to uh, uh, Bill, the planning commission me? or the uh, uh, council for approval. And I was just curious as to how that got approved. Right. What I'm reading is that they've been operating since 2013 without a CUP. So they never had a CUP. That is correct. Okay. So the basis of the fact that they have uh, or, or that they don't have one now is not the reason that we're providing it now. So I would take, I guess, uh, con I have concern of uh, approving a CUP uh, for the very reason that stated in your report, uh, two uh, liquor stores should not be uh, within a thousand feet of each other. And I think this is a very high concern with a lot of the people who did not show up for the public meeting, but certainly have been expressing their uh, concerns. Given that, uh, we when we put it on hold, this on hold, we we did uh, ask for the things that you showed to us, and I would certainly uh, uh, want to appreciate the staff's work on that because a lot of the things that have been done, I think, meet pretty much what we've been looking for, but I do think. This uh, uh, commission needs to address whether or not it should be uh, uh, the petitioner should be awarded uh, a CUP for this development. Unless I'm missing something here, where is the existing liquor store now? How far away is it from this site? It's about 150 feet. So, it's down the hill and in in a an existing strip mall. Okay, are they going to shut down the other liquor store, or are they going to operate two of them? Well, I don't I don't know any of that. It's our understanding that they're 
their intention is to move from uh, their location in this this retail center directly to the north to this site. Um, the reason they need the conditional use permit is actually because of the existence of the dirt cheap liquor store that's across Telegraph Road. So even if they shut this down, they still would be in violation of the thousand foot rule. That's yes. Correct. correct. Yes. So how were they operating in the last 10 years? Just nobody caught them? Uh, is it because the the site is at where it currently is located based on the way that the um, distance is measured is that it, it meets the thousand feet with the, the the way that the distances are measured because Abby correct me if I'm wrong um, it, it's a pedestrian walkway it's not simply a sort of a a straight line, so it meets as in currently they currently meet it, um, but the new location would not. Is that accurate, Abby? I believe so. But they never had a CUP. Is that correct? That's correct because I they okay. did not need one for the current location. So putting all that aside, I would like to suggest that <clears throat> because of the size and location of this project that we do not approve. And that is perfectly within the commission's uh, purview is to deny the conditional use permit. Um, and what we would do as your staff is that um, based on your rationale this evening, we would convert the letter into a, uh, into a letter of denial. Right. Do, uh, you, uh, do you withdraw your motion for a hold? And are you changing your motion for a hold to one of uh, disapproving? Uh, yes, yes, I, I would do that and, and I would I would also say what contributed to some of my thinking is that um, this uh, this building is all, uh, almost 4,000 square foot and and I think good planning would would probably not uh, be to have that size building on that very small uh, site. So, but I would make a motion for uh, uh, denial. Yes. Is that okay with the maker of the second? Uh, hey, I would send my second. And I would second the motion to deny. Okay, we got a motion on the floor for denial. Uh, questions or comments, anyone else? I, I, I do have a couple comments. The location that they're in now, Bill? Yeah. Is that where the, you know, the dirt, dirt sheeps across the street and then the, the husband and it was years ago, and this has been years back, had that location. And then there was the liquor store that was next door to it. Are they in that location now where the, the old liquor store is that moved down, down no. the draft no. across from Deerberg's? No. Uh, but. Uh, that that's true in terms of where the other liquor store went, but uh, when dirt it's now cheap, gone, it's gone, right? And, and where dirt cheap is on the very corner, uh, which is also highlighted in a little red or mm -hmm. orange or something there. Um, this this um, petitioner put a liquor store. If you look at the map directly north, uh, there's a strip mall. There's a, a auto repair shop in the shaded section. Yep. There's a couple of other shops that like a alteration shop and a shoemaker. Uh, there's other a smoke shop, I think, and then the liquor store. So when I said 175 feet, I'm probably thinking about how hip long I hit my golf ball. It, it, it's really a lot long uh, further than that uh, as far as being away from this liquor store that they're proposing. Thank you. So, so I'm confused. Is it in violation of the thousand foot or is it not? It, it would be. 
so the the reason that they have to ask for a conditional use permit is because the zoning ordinance requires that the um, if you are to site two liquor stores within a thousand feet of each other, packaged liquor stores, then you have to get a conditional use permit. So then what, when any property owner is then goes in front of the planning commission to request a conditional use permit, they have to pass the four pronged conditional use permit test, which is that, um, does it meet good planning practice? Um, can it be can it be cited in a way that is not detrimental to the health, safety, and welfare of of residents? Um, the the other two prongs are with I don't don't have them off the top of my head. So when you when the commission does issues or denies any sort of of conditional use permit, uh, it is assuring that uh, it does not find that any conditional use does not meet uh, that four prong test uh, as enumerated in your staff report. Um, so the rationale that the commission puts forward for the denial of the request, um, you know, at its best, will tie back to those four to the to that to that test to ensure that. Um, that, that the commission is stating it does not find that the um, placement of two liquor stores within a thousand feet can meet um, the, that those criteria. And that only applies to and I would store. agree with that. Uh, it applies to, and, and Mr. Hilsinger, it applies to all conditional use permit procedures. So if you ever had, so, you know, in the C2 shopping district, um, if you had any of the conditional uses. Um, it is the responsibility and role of the commission to uh, evaluate those conditional uses to ensure that it that they can be cited um, you know, appropriately. And the, and the whole rationale behind the conditional use permit process is that um, these uses are by their very nature need a little bit more um, review uh, to ensure that they can be cited appropriately, which is why the commission has given this, uh, this authority to, to grant or deny these requests. Yeah, I, I I don't understand why we would want to uh, override the thousand feet for a uh, building that's basically put on a small lot and needs uh, BZA BZA approval to go forward. So so Jacob, as I am, I am you know pretty pretty new to this process so if, if we deny this okay then it doesn't go to the cup process correct if it, if it is denied um then they will not have the right to construct a liquor store at this location okay but if we move forward with it and we 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 say yes then it still has to go through the conditional use per, uh, permit process and could still be denied uh, at a later date, because it doesn't meet one of the criteria. No, this is this is that process. So this is that process. Okay. The next process would be they would go through site development plan to ensure that any site development plan that they proposed met the criteria that the commission put forward. Um, so this is, but this process, this this decision tonight um, is the decision to grant or deny the conditional use permit. Thank you. There's another um, variance or something that needed to be approved by someone else after us, though, correct? That is correct. And that would, so the Board of Zoning Adjustment is a three person body uh, that is exists in a quasi judicial space, which is tasked with um, hearing requests for a relief from a strict application of the zoning ordinance of design criteria of a site development plan if there is a unique hardship um, that precludes them from being able to uh, meet the standards of the zoning ordinance so in this case they have a uh, their request would be to permit their drive aisles to be in the front yard the zoning ordinance has design criteria that your front yards uh, cannot be occupied with parking or with a drive aisle and they would would then have to justify their request to the Board of Zoning Adjustment at a, at a later date if this commission granted the use. So that is a that is an additional uh, uncertainty for the developer. Yeah. <clears throat> but you have but a hardship you... on a building that's not been built. So that is a that is because I don't want to uh, I don't want to theorize and, and put um, you know sort of put those sorts of um, 
into a specific case such as this. Um, but in general, it's going to be it's going to be there's some sort of un something unique about your parcel that makes it unduly burdensome for you to develop it um, in, in line with the zoning ordinance. So it's going to be perhaps it is a uh, you have a, a site that's that's particularly oddly shaped, or you have a site that has um, very difficult topography. Um, they those are the kinds of justifications that the Board of Zoning Adjustment typically takes into account when they grant their variances, um, something of that nature. Okay. But that has, uh, just to clarify, that has nothing to do with the CUP. That is correct. They are set completely separate processes. The, the, right. the nuts and bolts are the, sort of the real meat of the question before this commission tonight is, is the use appropriate? And if the use meets and to help you determine whether that use is appropriate to use that four prong conditional use permit test. Okay, anyone else? So this is Sandy. So the way that that liquor store was approved across the street, that did not come through the planning commission, right? That is no, correct. We, we get oh. blamed for it. <laughs> now that it's there, it does seem, you know, it does seem like a different use of the corner property would serve the residents more if it was something other than a second liquor store. Yeah. Is that essentially what we're saying that does it meet the good good plan? That is one of the, yes, that is one of the criteria that that can be tied into um, the, the the commission's letter of recommendation uh, or excuse me, letter of decision, which is that this does not meet good planning practice because the uh, concentration of liquor stores uh, in such a small area, particularly high profile corner lots uh, being occupied multiple high uh, uh, corner lots does not uh, meet the uh, intent and expectation of the planning commission for uh, a vibrant commercial corridor. Okay, thank you. And that if if that is okay, we will put something we will. That is something that we will put into uh, uh, part of your recommendation, or excuse me, part of your decision for denial this evening, if that is the will of the commission. Okay. Good comments. Anyone else? <laughs> Seeing none, we have a motion for denial. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining. I am abstaining. Mr. Fagan, and I believe that was Miss uh, Miss Hart. Correct. And the record, let the record show denial with a motion, uh, a vote of six to two. And with that, um, we'll go to old business orders for approval. Mr. Hilsinger, may I just a point of clarification? Yes. I, did I hear correctly that the Two commissioners abstained from voting. Yes. So th the vote would actually be zero six two. six zero two. Correct. Thank you. Okay. There are um, two letters of recommendation tonight: PC fourteen dash twenty three Amarin and PC fifteen dash twenty three Tiffany Mays. Uh, both letters are consistent with the commission's recommendations from the June executive meeting. Do we want to do these together? If that is your will, yes. Unless there's an objection, uh, we have a motion for the- make a motion for approval. Two letters? Yes. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion, anyone? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 8 0. And uh, we have a one correspondence item PC 37 22, Needy Pause Rescue. Good evening. PC 37 22, Needy Pause Rescue was a request for the con for a conditional use permit in the C2 to permit a pet care facility with overnight boarding for a track size of 0 0.16 acres located on the northeast quadrant of Gravoy Road and Matilda Avenue. This is coming before the commission tonight as a response to the council order. 
As the commission may recall, this site is located in South County, along Gravoy Road, right next to Federhofer's Bakery. The site is outlined in red on the right. This is just a brief timeline to, for the commission. On December 19th of 2022, the Planning Commission heard this petition at the public hearing. On January 9th, the Planning Commission voted to recommend denial of the request. On February 14th, 2023, the Planning Commission voted to forward a letter of decision indicating denial of the request. On February 21st of 2023, County Council referred the petition back to the Commission for further consideration. On March 22nd of 2023, the Department of Planning staff met with the petitioner to discuss the Planning Commission's concerns. And then on June 28th, 2023, the petitioner submitted additional information to staff, which has led us here tonight. Okay. The department has prepared a response to council um, recommending approval. The couple of the big concerns was the first concern from the planning commission was parking concerns. The petitioner has noted that the needy pause van will not be parked on site overnight or remain all day at the site. The vehicle would only be on site for loading and unloading of supplies. They've also noted that for as far as parking goes for volunteers, they would only need one to two parking spaces for the volunteers on shift and then one parking space for the caretaker who will be living on site. Another uh, concern from the planning commission was the unsupervised overnight boarding of animals. The petitioner has um, noted that a caretaker will live on site and as part of their leasing agreement will help to care for the animals that are being boarded overnight. The third concern that was of note was noise concerns. County Council did recommend that plantings be added to the fence um, line to mitigate noise for the surrounding residents. The petitioner has also noted that overnight boarding would include letting the dogs out about four times a day in 15 minute intervals. This um, with the last time being 830 to 930 PM and they would only allow three dogs out at a time. How many dogs would they be allowed? Um, they said in their letter, six dogs at a time and no more than two weeks. So the dogs would be only there for at most two weeks before they would find a foster home for them to go to. Okay. Um, personally, I'm in disagreement. I can't see putting this next door to Better offers bakery. Mm -hmm. The two just don't seem compatible. And I will say too, just to for further information, um, they will be running this during the daytime hours, the same hours as Federhofer's. It will be run as an administrative building. The overnight boarding may just be for, um, as they stated in their letter, for overflow um, for animals that for dogs that they maybe couldn't find foster homes for immediately, but that's what they have said in their letter, just for the commission's understanding. But most of these sites have overflows, or at least that's what they report. So um, we brought it, we did bring it to you this evening as a, um, as a, uh, a recommendation or, or excuse me, to change the decision to approval, but staff will, uh, again, this is, we will um, draft it. However, the will of the commission is, and if the commission would, uh, you know, however you want it done, we will, we will ensure that, that, that we uh, reflect your decision tonight. So this, uh -huh. Um, I, I have a question. So if the if there can be six dogs and we're only gonna let three out at a time <coughs> for a fifteen minute interval, so there could be eight fifteen minute intervals or two hours a day with three dogs outside, right? Yes. I mean, is the concern that that they're gonna be barking and a just really a disruption to the neighbors? Are there, is there residential behind it? I think I there is a that. residence right behind where the fence is, and that was one of the concerns that the resident himself brought up, um, and I believe was also brought up to the councilwoman um, as a concern. All right. 
I think the responses uh, uh, that the petitioner gave to you, and that's contained in this recommendation, uh, many of those are what the petitioner feels is not will not be an issue, and yet there's no way that this can be really policed or 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 uh, if, if we approve it, it's uh, it, it, then people have to live with it. And I do think that our decision, the last the, when we vote uh, for denial, uh, nothing has really changed in my mind. Uh, from these things, and so I, uh, I think it's not the right use of that uh, property by the neighbors and the bakery. Okay, we uh, need a motion on the floor. I, I, I have, I'm sorry. One question: Does yeah. does the bakery does the bakery have concerns with it? I have not spoken to them. And I don't believe we as staff have received anything from them either. What is the letter recommending approval of again? A conditional use for dog boarding? Yeah, it would be for the conditional use for pet care facilities with overnight boarding. So the pet care facilities is allowed by right in the C2 shopping district. The overnight boarding is what is requiring and triggering the conditional use permit in this situation. Are they already operating there as a as a uh, pet care during the day? At this site or in this general vicinity? Because I guess the answer is neither. Because they're uh, at the site, night Because there aren't any that I that are I am aware of in the general vicinity either. So this would be an introduction of a new use. A concern that I have is that the care a caretaker will live on site and care for the dogs as part of their leasing agreement. I really think what they're saying is that they're going to rent to someone who likes pets and likes animals, which I can appreciate. But if they go on vacation or they spend a night away from the home, is it possible that those dogs could bark all night and no one would be there to manage it? I mean, I don't think we can require a tenant to be at a facility every night. That's that's not part of it. An employee does that, but a tenant doesn't. Dogs could bark all night while he's while a resident is there or a caretaker or you know someone living there is there anyway. Um, Say that again. I'm sorry, you cut out. I said the dogs could bark whether or not someone is living there or staying there overnight also. Okay. How many dogs, pets can a, a resident, you know, residential people behind them, how many dogs can they have? So the county's code uh, uh, of ordinance is, is that we really control it through the nuisance code is essentially as long as the number of animals that you have does not trigger a nuisance. And that's going to be through either barking, um, the creation of unsanitary and unsightly conditions. Um, that's really how the county um, controls most of these issues is through a nuisance issue. We don't really have a, oh, you shall only have two uh, you know, unneutered type of type of rules that 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 some jurisdictions have. I think most indentures I've seen, which is separate from Stanley County, will limit to two. That's very frequent in subdivisions. Yes, right. Which is a separate issue. So if if the resident behind has two or three dogs and they become a nuisance then they will be cited and they will have to either clean it up or get rid of a couple of the pets. How would this business fall under that same if that becomes a nuisance? If they're the barking, if it's not sanitary, then would they be held to that same standards and then they would have to uh, fix it up or have to get rid of the animals? How would that work? 
So it would be through the uh, enforcement of the conditional use permit itself. So um, the conditional use permit is enforceable over a property owner um, based on the conditions that the commission puts into those into those permits. So if it was and let's use a theoretical. So in a case like this, if, if the commission were to state, you know, no more than 10 dogs and the dogs may not be outside later than 9 p.m., um, then it would be a policing issue that the county would have to ensure that um, one way or another that our inspectors, that if there were an issue, the inspectors would go in and, and verify that the conditional use permit is being, uh, is being um, you know, properly uh, upheld. And then, and then, if that is not the case, does this business license or can can then they be forced to either shut down or either come in compliance or come into yes, come they would be required to come into compliance through one of the many methods that the county has at its disposal to to require that. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I don't think we have a motion. Uh, um, are you waiting for a motion? Yeah. Huh? Do yeah, we need a motion? I'll make a motion for deny or, or to uh, the we're coming back to a letter of recommendation, right? Uh, so you can uh, not to, to change what we've done before. Reiterate your denial. Right. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second the motion. We have a first and second discussion. Anyone? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No, abstain again. Abstain the again. Show seven zero one. And we'll give it. I, I apologize. Was it 602? Yes. I, I believe Mr. Fagan uh, abstained. Okay. Yeah, I was cutting out. Sorry. Okay. 602. And we'll go on to site plans. We've got three. First one, 12 23. Ezra Salamovic. Mr. Hilsinger, would you like to go through all of these individually or go through them together? Um, we can do them together. Okay, um, so site plans this evening are uh, PC 12-23 Azra Selimnovic, uh, PC 133-66 Volkholtz Mortuary, and PC 12-22 Mason Lane LLC. So I'll click through them. And we are recommending approval of all of these site plans. So the Buckholz one, this is, uh, I, and forgive me, Abby, if you were going to jump in, this is they're adding some of that parallel parking into the front of their structure um, that the commission voted to to recommend approval of, of mending that ordinance just a few weeks ago. So this is that this is that site plan. Thanks, Jacob. Mm -hmm. And then Mason Lane is the uh, the laser me site. Laser me site. And the changes are um, new curbing along the entrance from Mason Lane, and then. Uh, Parking lot striping. And on Higgy Road, what are we doing there? Uh, I apologize. That was the request for a conditional use or an amended C8 to permit the uh, a tattoo parlor. So there are, are no changes to the site um, proposed. Okay. Okay. Uh, with that, we need a motion. Motion for approval. Second motion. Discussion, anyone? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it, 8-0. Jacob, anything good? Yes, I have two things that I want to uh, bring up with the commission first, and I'm sad that she's not here, but uh, I think the commission should know that uh, Mel Wilson was promoted to the deputy director of planning. So um, I have was given the good fortune uh, to be able to create that position. I have come to rely on Mel's um, 
not just her um, good sense of, of planning, uh, but also just her really excellent administrative skills. I, I really rely on her on running these meetings. Um, so um, she, I think it was well-deserved um, and uh, she um, is, is, is a, a real asset to the residents of St. Louis County to have someone of her caliber and her work um, uh, working for working here at the county. So I wanted to, to let the commission know about that. And then the other piece is that at tomorrow's council meeting, the if any of you have have looked at their agenda, you will notice that on the communications items of the agenda for uh, council tomorrow is a request by the Department of Planning to uh, be permitted to enter into contract negotiations uh, with the selected firm for the comprehensive plan. So, uh, as you see on their agenda, uh, it is it, it is publicly available. Um, the selection committee uh, worked very diligently on making their selection. Um, we made that recommendation to the council and so we are moving forward with uh, with that with the selection committee for uh, the comprehensive plan and I wanted uh, you all to be aware of that and we are uh, drawing closer to uh, having them fully on board and getting ready to that process so I wanted to keep everyone informed Can you tell us next week yes mm -hmm. absolutely you, anything else anyone yeah member Bedell is here so the last Two votes should be seven zero two and and nine zero. Okay, did not know he got on. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bedell. Okay, with that, we need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those ayes have it. Nine zero. And with that, we'll see everyone. Uh, June 7th, next, week. next Monday. Yep. Have a nice week, everybody. Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.